Welcome to Digital Asset News. They get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces today. Fascinating stuff. First up, Cardano's blockchain technology set to usher in the fourth industrial revolution in Georgia. And this actually comes about as something that Charles Hoskinson had said in one of his live streams and how it's all connected also. The example of the craziness that is cryptocurrency digital assets. DeFi's raw deal, sushi swap creator transfers multi-sig control to FTX CEO. And we're going to take a look at what's going on with the price action as far as sushi. Hint, hint, it's up. Also, almost a billion XRP is sent to claim the Spark tokens as four exchanges announced support for the upcoming airdrop. And I'm going to tell you which ones those are and how important this actually is. And Q of the Day is going to go over what the heck is going on with Bitcoin Cash and this hard fork coming up in November. And is it reversible? I had to reach out and grab this guy to answer the question because I need to know what the heck's going on. All right, before we get out, let's take a look at what's going on with the market. It is 11 a.m. Texas time, and it is September 7th, Labor Day. Congratulations, everybody. We made it. Let's take a look at what we got. So first up, Bitcoin is actually above 10,000, so I'm pretty happy about that. It has been dipping below that 10K to like the 9998 9, range, so I'm just happy it is where it's at. Hopefully it'll stay there. Uh, Ethereum, almost at 350, so kind of teetering around that. And again, I thought this was gonna go much lower, but uh, it's actually um, buoyed to that price point, so I'm happy that it's staying there. Tether's Tether, nobody cares. XRP, watch out, 0.3 cents. Chainlink, uh, number five spot again, and it's up 0.3% up to $12. Now this had actually gone below $10 and was in the 980 range. So I'm happy to see it up there again. I mean, on, in, in all honesty, everything's pretty much done a, li a little slight correction, but then they're back to uh, going in, in the right way. But who knows what's going to happen over the next uh, you know, week, two weeks, two months. Uh, but um, I don't see I don't see it actually going or actually increasing. I see a decrease and a little bit more correction coming up. Bitcoin Cash in the sixth spot. And again, the Bitcoin Cash has been bouncing around and it was actually in the, in the fifth spot yesterday and it's been going between five and seven and it all comes down to this fork that's going to happen potentially now it's going to happen in, in November. So I think what people are doing is going, hey, why don't I just load up on Bitcoin Cash because if there's a fork, I'm going to get some free tokens and uh, I can see that that rationale. But uh, I don't know if that is the most fantastic idea and uh, I'll talk about that in the day. Next up, Polkadot looks to be about 448 so again uh, not too bad down 3.3.4 3 percent 24 for the week what are you gonna do finance coin bitcoin sv <laughs> bitcoin sv up 6.3 percent sure litecoin 0.2 1.9 for crypto.com what else is really there's nothing really fantastic uh, as far as news goes cosmos down almost five percent uh c die dash yearn eek 6.8% down 30% for the week down at 22,000. I thought it was going to actually break below 20, but it actually uh, maintained. So uh, it's not too bad. Ethereum Classic down 3.4%. Hey, what are you going to do? How do your third 51% attack? Compound 5% up. That's pretty nice. Synthetics down three. Where is Sushi? That's my question. Sushi, anything up is great here. Aha, number 66. Up 6% at 291. So uh, this was up around seven or eight dollars and, and it dropped down to $1.35, somewhere around there. And now we're up at uh, almost three bucks. So uh, of course, sushi for the DeFi, we're gonna get into a bit. Um, this is the craziness of all crazy. Um, if you're into to, to DeFi and to sushi, sushi swap, all I'm gonna say is, um, you know, hey, be careful. That's it. All right, let's jump into today's top story. So first up, Cardano's blockchain technology sets it usher in the fourth industrial revolution in Georgia. And when I first saw the title of this, I'm like, all right, well, uh, that piques my interest. How is Cardano going to do that? And it all kind of comes down to, there was a live stream with Charles Hoskinson and the things that he said, and I was like, is he really doing that? And I'll get into that in a second, but here's the, here's the whole story. The former prime minister of Georgia, Mamuka, I th Mamuka, Bakhtadze. I'm pretty sure I nailed that. Blockchain uh, is set for the fourth industrial revolution. And he states, the first industrial revolution was powered by the steam engine and the fourth will be powered by blockchain. That's a game changer. Bakhtadze uh, revealed that Georgia is working with Cardano's Charles Hoskinson through IOHK to implement a special blockchain based education program 
in the country. He further states, currently we are implementing a very important project in the education sector together with IOHK and Charles Hoskinson, who is a very good friend of Russia, together with the Ministry of Justice and Minister for Education. We are implementing the Credentials Verification Project. The team is using a Cardano-backed blockchain for this. And I've always said, in business, it is not what you know, it is who you know. And I got to give kudos to Charles Hoskinson and the rest of the group for reaching out or just being a part of that discussion, not just businesses and corporations, but entire countries and who knows, maybe even large cities and nations, I don't know. But uh, this all came back to a live stream that he did. And when he said this, I was like, I don't know if he's full of it, but uh, we'll take a look. So this was on September 3rd when everything had crashed. Mostly in part thanks to DeFi, I will say that. And uh, Charles gives two great pieces of information here. The first is, is a minute long. He talks about COVID-19 and what's going to happen and DeFi and the fear and reality. And it was pretty interesting. Um, and actually, I tweeted this or I actually sent this out on my YouTube uh, as far as the community to watch this video because it was very well said. So there's two parts of this. There's that. And he talks about the different people that him and his organization talks to. So let's take a listen. It's a rough day today, and that markets are terrible, down 20% for most people. And every now and then I talk about price. I rarely do. Uh, but in general, let's talk about the macro. You know, um, crypto is a unique phenomena. It's a unique thing. And these are crazy times. Uh, I remember just a few months back when coronavirus first came out, and we saw basically everything just bottom out. Everybody went crazy. They went to cash. All asset classes just went to hell in a handbasket. Uh, and I did a video and I said, guys, our best days are ahead of us as an ecosystem and as an industry. And what happened? Everything got better over time. People started getting more optimistic. You know, the reality is that we are seeing an old industry die right now. The legacy financial system. So that's sage advice. And it's true. I mean, he was right. He was right. Because back in, the, in those days in March, the sky was falling. Everything was going to collapse. It was the end of cryptocurrency digital assets. It was just awful, right? That was what a lot of people said. Of course, we know better because we have strong hands. We're like, you know what? This is a great buying opportunity. However, I talked about it in yesterday's video where I didn't do what I was supposed to do. I didn't buy as much as I should have back then. So with this dip that's going on right now, I am increasing my dollar cost average strategy as far as like what I buy because I know it's only going to go up. And in this situation right here, Charles is co completely correct. He's like, you know what? It's going to go up and this is going to be just a, just a blip on the radar. And sure enough, here we are. So I know some people uh, are not a fan of the Cardano um, project. Some people love it. Some people love Charles. Some people hate Charles. That's just how it is in business. That's just how it is in life, right? I personally like him. I like Charles. I like how he, you know, how he gets things done, and uh, I like the whole project. And I've invested heavily into it. Only time will tell. I could, uh, you know, it could go to zero. <laughs> Who knows? No one knows. But um, this next part is what threw me for a loop. And I'm like, I wonder if this is really, you know, an, an embellishment. I mean, I'm sure he talks to these people, but I'm, I'm wondering if it's an embellishment of of more of what's what's going on. And it is echoed in the story we're just talking about right now. So let's take a listen. Uh, with some people this morning, and we talked about revolutionizing the healthcare industry and getting things uh, better in terms of supply chains. I had another meeting with a, a soon to be former Wyoming state representative about how we're gonna get governments to adopt blockchain technology. I talk every day to governors, heads of state, congressmen, senators, mayors of cities, sometimes very large cities with millions of people. And they all say the same thing. We need help. We need solutions. We're damn tired of the way that the old system is running. And you know what? If we don't solve it, a lot of people are going to get hurt or continue to be hurt. Here's why Cardano will succeed. It will succeed because of the connections they are building right now, the people that they are talking to, the railroad track that they are laying and everything that's going on in the background all the different hard work that's going on i'll put my money on cardano again it's not what you know it's who you know and if you're talking to those types of big people the ones that can move mountains the governments that can move mountains it's a pretty good bet i would bet on that speaking of which i should probably buy some more cardano today anyhow back to the story
So moving down, Georgia as a blockchain-powered regional hub for business, tourism, and finance. First of all, where is Georgia? Well, Georgia is a small Eurasian country that borders Russia to the north, Turkey, Azerbaijan, and Armenia to the south, and is often referred to as the crossroads where Western Europe meets Asia. So a little tiny place, uh, not too big. So why is this so important? Well, when I first read it, I'm like, it wasn't really exciting to me because I'm like, it's just a small country. But I remember there's a book that I had picked up not too long ago. It's called The Nomad Capitalist. And what they talk about is it's not about looking towards these countries that are traditionally something for, for expats to go to. The Puerto Ricos, the Bahamas, the Cayman Islands. Those, it goes, those types of places are not going to appreciate you as much. Look to the countries or states or regions that are actually building up and are looking to progress themselves by adopting emerging technologies. That's exactly what it says in the Nomad Capitalist. And I thought to myself, I'm like, you know what? This could be one of those places. So if you're looking for the next big country to uh, really just explode in, in, on the global stage, maybe Georgia is one of those places. And what are the projects that they're using? Cardano. Anyhow, Bakhdadzi's speech during the 2020 World Economic Forum's virtual summit held in Davos highlighted the limitless potential presented by the blockchain technology, especially in the public sector. The overall vision is to establish Georgia as a regional hub for business, trade, tourism, and finance through innovation and partnership with key stakeholders. The country has a population of 4 million. It's heavily dependent on tourism, which attracts up to 9 million per year. Apart from plans to develop a national digital currency, the country will also explore blockchain solutions to attract visitors, especially after the coronavirus period. The countries who will be more supportive of digital currencies and cryptos will have a very significant competitive advantage in the 21st century. Georgia cannot afford to miss this opportunity. And it's just, if you look back in history, the different countries that have embraced technology, especially for these industrial revolutions, have been the ones that are not just the conquerors, but have been the economic leaders throughout the global community. And if we take a look at cryptocurrency digital assets, and there's one more actually, artificial intelligence, those types of countries that embrace those new technologies will be the forefront moving forward. So I will put my money on that. And also the different projects that are being talked to, such as Cardano. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. Next up, this is how I know cryptocurrency Ecosphere is just crazy. Uh, there's a raw deal. Sushi Swap creator transfers multi sig control to FTXCO. And this was actually a very good uh, part of what actually happened, but the rest is kind of crazy. So, what's going on here? So, the reason many in the crypto community are angry towards the anonymous developer called Chef Nomi is because he withdrew 13 million from the Sushi Swap pool and cashed out for Ethereum. So, if you're not familiar with this whole story, it's all about decentralized finance. You can go to Sushi Swap and you can put up your different cryptocurrencies and as far as like like a loan or taking it out for uh, sorry, for staking or taking out for a loan, and they will give you sushi. And sushi is the governance token, which wasn't worth too much. Then all of a sudden, it went to a dollar, then three dollars, then eight dollars, then nine dollars, and then all of a sudden, the person that created it goes, "You know what? All this sushi, I'm just gonna sell all mine, and I'm gonna cash out." And people were not happy about that. And this was from Crypto Graffiti. He says, "Who would have thought sushi goes bad after a week?" And I want to remind you, this happened in a span of like seven days, seven eight days. That's pretty fast, and it just blew up. A lot of people made a good amount of money, but there were some people left holding the bag. But uh, who knows? Because right now, it actually dropped down to a dollar. If you didn't sell it a dollar and just kind of just held on to it, well, now it's like at, what do we say? Like around three bucks? So... <laughs> Whatever. But anyhow, this is a pretty funny one. Uh, after a week, there was a guy from Coin Bureau had a pretty funny uh, statement. He says, yam, hot dog, and now sushi. Everything is, is getting some of that DeFi food poisoning. Pretty good one. I like that. So moving on, the sushi swap general manager called Zero X Makey or Ox Makey, I don't know, explained that he needed to discuss the situation with Chef Nomi, but the creator went to bed. Yeah, I can't make that up. Anyhow, However, on Sunday afternoon, Ox Makey said he didn't know who Nomi really was or the third developer involved with Sushi Swap. When Chef Nomi returned from his slumber, the Anon creator said he was transferring control to SBF, which is Sam Bankman Fried uh, from the crypto exchange FTX. And I got to talk to that guy. I want to see what's going on. Yeah. Um, he says, we sent a time lock admin control to SBF, replace me, replaces me by SBF for a 
uh, developer multi-sig contract currently which controls more than a million dollars worth of sushi he states i hope sushi swap does well without me again i didn't intend to do any harm i'm sorry if my decision is not to follow what you expected but i want to stress again i did not intend to scam anyone so that's a pretty nice statement right however andrew cronhey from the popular urine finance DeFi project criticized him by saying this what do you mean without me are you leaving the project? If so, are you giving the funds, the developer funds back? All you did so far was hand over a token that was built off a of Uniswap protocol. Weren't the funds meant to further develop? Aren't you that developer? Well, if he is that developer, so he pretty much just paid himself. <laughs> I mean, that's really what happened. And he took all that money. He's like, hey, sorry, I'm out of here. Anyhow, that's pretty much for the, for the whole story. It's an ongoing development. But I got to tell you, I, um, me personally, I mean, some people like risk. Not a very risk type of person i like to put money into things that are kind of like a sure bet than that and cryptocurrency and digital assets let's be honest i mean they are volatile i will pick the safest most volatile asset i, I guess you could say that the most volatile asset is cryptocurrency digital assets and i'll put my uh, money into the safest one it's kind of like betting on the tallest midget it's the same thing all right let me know what you think in the comment section let's move on next up and i'll make this quick uh, almost a billion XRP sent to claim Spark tokens as four exchanges announced support for upcoming airdrop. First of all, what the heck is Spark? Spark is a token of the Flare network, and the Flare network is a Turing complete smart contract platform that integrates the Ethereum virtual machine. Its native asset, Spark, is a governance token that can be used as collateral with that application. So what they're really much saying is that we're they're going to take XRP and give it the smart contract functionality. Fantastic, right? So I'm not going to delve too deep into it, but what's going on is these four exchanges or wallets are saying, hey, we're going, if you have your XRP in here, we are going to be able to uh, participate in this airdrop. And that's Uphold, GitHub, Anchor USD and Bitru. I've heard of Bitru. I've heard of Uphold. The other two, I have no idea. So I, I don't know. But um, I do actually use Uphold. So maybe I'll just transfer it to XRP. But if you don't know, we actually did a step-by-step -step tutorial. If you have a Nano Ledger, how to use the Nano Ledger to set yourself up for the airdrop for Spark tokens if you hold XRP in your Nano Ledger. And uh, I'll try to link this at the very end, but this is the video. You can check that out. It even has timestamps, so super easy. Easy peasy. All right, so that's it. So let's move on to Q of the day. And the big question that I've been having is why is Bitcoin Cash jockeying for position? And at some point, it's five, sometimes it's seven or eight. What is going on, especially with this hard fork? Because I got to tell you right now, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I'm sick of forks. I just, I know that's the beauty of cryptocurrency and everything can be done by that. And that's the, you know, the fairest type of thing, but I'm tired of Bitcoin forks. I think it's stupid. So let's get this guy in here who can actually answer some questions. So everybody, welcome back to the office. So uh, the big thing today was um, when we talked in the very beginning, we saw that Bitcoin Cash was, was jockeying for position. Sometimes it was number five, sometimes it was number seven. And the big question is, you know, why is that actually happening? And I think one of the resolutions was because there is a potential fork going on. Now, I don't know all the different uh, instances of what is happening. So I had to reach out and ask some questions. And thankfully, uh, this guy came on the show and I think he was the right one to answer. So Roger, welcome to the show. What is going on with this fork? Tell me what's happening. Yeah, so there's uh, two different ideologies at this point. So there's the ABC camp that was the original name of the group that forked away from the BTC version of Bitcoin into Bitcoin Cash. I guess they've been frustrated that they're not getting as much money from businesses or people or wherever uh, to pay for them to do the things that they want on Bitcoin Cash. So they decided that on November 15th, they want 8% of the block award to go directly to them and their, their group. And the vast majority of the rest of the Bitcoin Cash community says, no, 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 that's not how Bitcoin has ever worked. And that's not how Bitcoin Cash has ever worked. Uh, we're not going to do that. And so half of the original group that made Bitcoin Cash's initial full node implementation split away from Bitcoin ABC and formed another group called Bitcoin Cash Node. And currently on the network, more than 50% of the network is signaling uh, for Bitcoin Cash Node for the November 15th upgrade. 0% of the network are signaling for Bitcoin ABC, which is the one that will have the 8% fee from the block reward go directly to those developers and the other 40 something percent just plain isn't signaling at all uh so what will happen on november 15th my guess is that um bitcoin cash will continue to be bitcoin cash without any portion of the block reward going to pay for uh, a set of developers that decided that they're going to pay themselves out of the block reward 
Maybe those developers that really want that will decide to split away, but that'll be some other coin called ABC coin or something else. And the vast, vast majority of the Bitcoin Cash community will continue working on Bitcoin Cash. So, uh, but if anything, I think this shows uh, an example that uh, that's the beauty of cryptocurrencies. Everybody can have the version of a cryptocurrency that they want, whether it's Bitcoin Cash, ABC coin, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dash, Monero, take your pick. There's a, there's a cryptocurrency out there for you. Yeah, you know what? So, okay. So I think in my mind, I had it switched around. I thought it was with your group, it was 8%, but it's only like it's the opposite way. Gotcha. The thing is, like, like when, when I see this and like what everybody sees, they're like, ah, another fork. And it's like every time we hear about a fork, we're like, God dang it, another fork's coming out. So it sounds to me like this, it might actually happen, but it might actually die on the chain. Yeah, you never know what's going to happen. But I share your frustration, like, ah. Oh. Yeah. Another fork. Oh, more arguing. <laughs> oh, I, I share your frustration there. It would be easier if it didn't exist. But uh, the best positive outcome out here is maybe every Bitcoin cash holder gets a free airdrop of more, uh, you know, free ABC coins here in, on November 15th. So, yeah, and, and, and see, and, and that's, that's one of those things. Like, I, like, when I look at this, I think to myself, okay, because I remember when it, it was all about airdrops and splits and forks, and it was like, okay, time to make some money, right? All of a sudden, we're going we're gonna to split, and it's going to come in, it's going to be fantastic. However, it doesn't always work like that. I remember way back in the day when Monero split and they had a separate, uh, you know, separate chain. I was like, okay, this sounds pretty good. Monero's a pretty good project. Died on the chain. Did not happen. So I see like this, I see what's going on and I'm wondering to myself, is this the same type of situation? And it almost sounds like it could potentially be that. But who knows, like you say. Yeah, and, and just, you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty. With the original Bitcoin Cash and BSV split, I thought that that was going to, the, the one fork would die on the chain and would just continue as one. And boy, was I wrong on that assumption. Um, gotcha. So and then, you, you never know until it actually happens, I guess. Is there any way, any kind of resolution between these, these two groups to go, come on, let's just meet in the middle? Or is it kind of like, okay, do it, and then we'll see what happens? Yeah, I, I think the, the resolution and what would be the happiest for everybody are the people that want 8% of the block award. Uh, they should go ahead and do that, but they shouldn't say that it's Bitcoin Cash. They should... Uh, hard fork away and have replay protection and choose what their name for their coin is. And then they can get 8% of the block award. And some people will like that. And some people will build on that ecosystem. But uh, Bitcoin.com is going to continue focusing on Bitcoin Cash because there's so much amazing stuff happening on that, even without 8% of the block award being uh, diverted to some developers. Okay, Roger. So you you did the tripwire. So I, I, I said, if we got time, I'll ask you the question. So what do you guys, because you said it's going to be fantastic. So what are you guys doing to move Bitcoin Cash into mass adoption going not just this year, but next year, three years, five years. Yeah, there's so many things. One that's immediately useful for everybody right now is uh, Tether. USDT is available on Bitcoin Cash. You can use it right now in the Bitcoin.com wallet, and it's a 20th of a penny per transaction, whereas on Ethereum, you're looking at three, four, five, six bucks per transaction at the moment for your Tether transactions. Uh, so you can use Tether right now in the Bitcoin.com wallet. But where it gets really cool is using these things called Cash Fusion, where your Bitcoin Cash can be really, really, really private. You can check it out at cashfusion.com, and we're building that right into your Bitcoin.com wallet. And if you combine that with uh, reusable payment codes, you're basically looking at having a, the same sort of ballpark of privacy as a Monero, but in Bitcoin Cash that's accepted at more than 100,000 websites across the world. So I think that's a really powerful tool. And I'm a big fan of Monero. I bought my first Monero at around a dollar each, and I've been a Monero fan for a long time. But uh, because Monero is so awesomely private, prefer to get adoption on exchanges around the world and businesses around the world whereas bitcoin cash doesn't have that problem because the privacy is coming a layer above the base protocol and then of course tokens 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 on bitcoin cash it's just amazing how easy it is for people to make tokens and pay dividends on chain to the token holders so you can issue a, a token and pay tether as dividends to all your token holders for your new you know ico project or business or whatever it is so really exciting there too or new whatever project you got going on. Whatever kind of DeFi sushi nonsense you got happening, right? Whatever. Watch out for bad sushi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Hey, I appreciate it. What was the name of that again for the uh, privacy factor for Bitcoin Cash? Uh, cash Cashfusion.com, uh, available for desktop today, coming on mobile in the Bitcoin.com wallet. Uh, should be this year. Okay, I had no idea about that. That's pretty cool. So for all you privacy fans out there, that could be your next step because of what is happening with privacy coins. Roger, thanks so much. I appreciate it. And that's it for today. Let's jump back. And just real quick, a uh, quick correction. It is not cashfusion.com. Like Roger said, it's actually cashfusion.org. So I was taking a look at it and then uh, I got a message like, hey, sorry, I messed up. So a uh, little correction there. So cashfusion.org, here's all the information that you can have. You can take a look at it. It's all about privacy. I'm not a big privacy guy for you know privacy coins, but uh, for some of you out there, this is a big deal. So 
I just want to make sure everybody knew what the heck was going on. All right, all right so I hope that answered some questions. Let's see how it all plays out. Hopefully it works out for the best. I have no idea, but uh, we'll see. Uh, so that's it for today. Uh, thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. Really appreciate it. If you don't know, there's a join now button underneath. Um, you don't get anything special. It's like a buck ninety nine, like a tip. And these are all what I do is just give uh, shout outs, random shout outs. So I just want to say thanks to everybody like Steve Subi, also for Modern Samurai, uh, I Am Not I, GK, DJ Hausa, uh, Rama Flash, and I'm used web designer Barry Belasco. So thanks everybody, really appreciate it. If you like those types of videos, there's gonna be two more that's gonna pop up. I'm gonna try to put the one with the uh, uh, Spark tutorial on the right. The left one usually just does whatever they do. And uh, that is it, so check out those other videos. I appreciate it and uh, I will see you on the next one.